And this whole thing is being orchestrated from behind the scenes to knock down the World Trade Center. I mean, and, and the day it happened, I became so depressed, I just dropped out of speaking. I no longer toured, I no longer did radio, I no longer talked to anyone, and I've been out of commission for many years because 9-11 just shut me down. As far as I was concerned, I was through with America. I'm through with all of it. Because in any country that can buy three high-rises falling down into dust and not ask any questions about that, I just gave up. I thought, you know... Yeah. So, because I'm well aware of how governments work, religions work, and banks, and... Well, let me give you an example. There are only two things on the earth, land and water. People live on land. So, the law of the land is the law of people who live on land. That's why it's called the law of the land. But the law of the land is different in every country because it's the law of the people who live on the land. But you can do things in Russia you can't do in America. You can do things in South Africa, but you can't do in China. So the law of the land is different in every country. But the law of water is the law of money, the cash flow, the liquid asset. <clears throat> and, and I'll give you an example of how this works. Because when a ship pulls into harbor, it's coming in on water. And it's going to bring products. And so all ships, by law, must be female. This is why you will always hear a captain saying that she is a good ship. She is seaworthy. She. Because all ships are female. And the reason why is because she produces the product. And when a ship pulls into harbor, it parks at the dock. And each piece coming off the ship has to have a, uh, a certificate of manifest. And the ship where it sits is in its berth. So when you were born, you came out of your mother's water. So you have to have a birth certificate. And it's signed by the doc. And if you drop the car or the television, it's a stillborn. So you have to have a death certificate. Uh, so your body, as a matter of fact, your body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. If you take, um, if you take your Social Security card... And I'm not going to talk much more about this because there are other things I want to talk about, but this I think is interesting. If you take your Social Security card, and on the back of a Social Security card, you will see a series of numbers. And those numbers are, uh, on mine are in red. And those numbers on the back of the Social Security card represent your physical body on the stock exchange in New York. And if you take a bill, any kind of an American bill, whatever it is, 10, 20, 100, 1, whatever it is, you will see a series of, of, of numbers here, code numbers, on the bill. You match the numbers on the bill with the back of the Social Security card. It's because there's about $6.5 million or more circulating around the world with your Social Security number on the bill because your body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. They are buying and selling your personal body on the Stock Exchange in New York. And most people don't understand any of this and have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's, it's the way banks work. And so I have discovered also that banks and government are basically based on uh, religion. Religion is at the bottom of all of this. This is why I have no respect. I, I have a respect and uh, a, a reasonable respect for law and order. I'm not, I'm not so stupid as not to understand the need for red lights and, and the things which are required in law for people to live together. But I have no respect for religion, government, banking, and especially educational institutions because I know who finances these organizations. I know where the money comes from. Our banks were given to us by the Knights Templars, the Masonic Lodge of Knights Templars in Europe. Our educational institutions, universities and colleges were given to us by the Masonic Order coming out of, uh, out of Rome. This is why the square martyr board is a Catholic symbol. 
And Jews, how many Jews know that when you wear a yarmulke, that's not Jewish, it's Roman? That's why the Pope wears a yarmulke. That's why the Cardinals wear the yarmulke. It's a Roman symbol, it's not Jewish. The Jews were told to wear the yarmulke to show subjection to Rome. And they got so used to using it, they think it's a, they think it's a Jewish symbol. It's not Jewish, it's Roman. And uh, of course, there's a word, and another thing that bothers me too when it comes to religion. There is a world of difference between Jewish and being anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish. It doesn't mean the same thing at all. So when you hear someone use the term anti-Semitic, just remember that there's four kinds of Semitic, North, East, South, and West, Semitic. And there are 13 different races of people in the world that are Semitic. They're Arabs of Semitic. So when you say someone's anti-Semitic, it means that, that they are against 13 races of people in the world, 13 nations. So when somebody says something about Jewish, it's anti-Jewish, not anti-Semitic. So it's just a small point, but it's big with me because people use terms and they use the wrong terms and don't understand what they're, they're saying. Religion, government, educational institutions. Um, I have found that so many people willingly, and as I said last night on, the, on, the for, on this forum, so many people willingly bend themselves to what their masters want from them. What your masters want is for you to be in compliance, for you to think what they have told you to think. I've been behind the cameras in national uh, in, uh, television studios and watched uh, network uh, news people doing their job. And what most people do not realize is on the nightly news from the, from the networks, when you see the, uh, the, the newsman talking directly to you, he's talking right into the camera, giving you the news. And point of fact, that's not what's happening. There is a big box, a large box, with a television screen on the bottom. And there is a glass, a, a, a clear glass on an angle. And the, the television, and there's a guy sitting off, off the side, typing, or it's already typed, to telling the newsman what to say, word for word. And so the television uh, screen is hitting this glass and is reflecting straight out so that the newsman can sit right there and look directly into the camera and read the news. And so he's just reading what somebody else wrote. And that guy wrote it uh, because the boss told him what to write. And so the news is nothing more than what, uh, you know, what somebody on higher up wants you to believe. So that's why I have no respect for the news. I don't watch television. I'm not interested in Hollywood or movies as such. Um, but there is a lot of interesting stuff in movies. Uh, government, again, I say, it's just my, my belief. I believe government boils down to the war between the Crips and the Bloods. But that's all it is. It's just one gang is superior to another gang. Unless, of course, that other gang gets a little more money and gets a little bit more vicious. Now they take over town. And so it's a war between gangs. Because after all, when it's all boiled down, it boils down to one thing. We're all human. And humans, like Martin Luther King said, People are organizations. Martin Luther King said organizations are a lot more naughtier than individuals. Individuals can be bad and corrupt, but when you get a whole bunch of individuals bad and corrupt and they're wearing, uh, they're wearing uniforms and wearing badges, now you've got a gang. And the police department even have said that. You know, they, they tell me things like that. Yeah, we're the biggest gang in town. We're legal. We can do whatever we want. So I understood a long time ago that uh, government is simply gang warfare. Who's going to run this town? Well, what, what family in the mob is going to run this area of the town? So that's, that's why I have no respect for government, banking, or any of the rest of it. Um, I could go on in, uh, about so many different things that I'm interested in. Again, like I said, religion is a big thing with me. I believe that in the New Testament, the story about Jesus in the New Testament, 
It's just my opinion, but I believe that that story is an encoded message. It's a metaphor. It does not represent history as such, but it is a very powerful encoded story. And if you understand the symbols and the words that are used in the New Testament in the story of Jesus, and understand that the entire story is a metaphor, you read between the lines and begin to see that there's uh, symbols and, I I and ideas are being expressed and you didn't even see it. A classic example is why did Judas go out and kiss Jesus? Just an example. In the Bible, we're told that Judas went out and kissed Jesus. And Christians will tell you what well, a reason why he did that it was to identify him so that he could be arrested. No. Logic alone would tell you that's incorrect because Jesus would not have been living in the south side of Chicago or in the north end of, of New York. You know, he was living, he would have been living in a little Mickey Mouse little uh, village and probably 300 people there at, the mo at, at most, 15 minutes to 20 minutes to walk across the whole town. And, you know, so how could he be hiding? Who, was, uh, who would be so stupid as not to know who he is? He's sitting out there in the garden with his followers. So what do you need to go out and kiss him for to identify? Well, that's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say he went out to identify. It says Judas went out and kissed Jesus to betray him, not identify. This is why the mafia, when you're going to be killed, they give you the kiss of death. Because... In the ancient world, in the Middle East, when a scorpion bites you, it leaves two cuts on your skin. And those two cuts look just like human lips. So the ancient people said, you've been given the kiss of death. And this is why when the mob's going to whack you, they give you the kiss of death, right? It's because of, a, it's because of the scorpion is a backbiter. Jesus represents in the story a, a symbol. He is, it's a metaphor. And Jesus is a metaphor for the sun. And so, I, so boiling it down, Christianity is sun worship based on astrology. Because nobody owns the sun. Africans don't own it. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we don't own the sun. So obviously the sun belongs to God. So it's God's sun. And he's the light of the world. Of course the sun's the light of the world. What else lights the world if it's not the sun? And he has 12 helpers. Of course, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. Uh, he is our risen savior. Of course, it rises every morning about 5.30. And the sun is your savior. If it don't come up, we're dead. So once you start breaking down the symbols in the, Old, in the New Testament, you begin to see that Christianity is basically astrology and sun worship. But it has been so well hidden and, and so, so cleverly disguised. And once you start breaking it down and reading the whole story, it becomes overwhelmingly obvious this is what we're talking about. He has a virgin birth. He's born of a virgin, of course. Virgin birth because one of the constellations of the zodiac is Virgo, Virgo the Virgin. Let me give you an example of how this works. On the first day of summer, the very first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to go. It doesn't go any further north. The first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere and it begins to work its way south. And each day it moves one degree. And as it moves one degree each day, 30, uh, 90 days later, or 90 degrees later, it's halfway down. So now we say that the sun was the Lion King in summer. The Lion King, because the sun was in the constellation of Leo, the Lion King from Disney. But then as the sun moves southward, it finally hits Scorpio. So God's sun was really hot. He was the Lion King, but now he's falling. So now we call it fall because he's falling, and he's falling south. So the, the, it moves into um, fall in Scorpio. This is why Judas gives Jesus the kiss of death because Judas represents Scorpio, and Scorpio gives the God's son, the light of the world, 
the kiss of death. And now he's going to die in Capricorn. He's going to die and go all the way down. But what's interesting about this is that the sun goes all the way down south until it hits what is called the winter solstice. And that's on December 22nd, the sun hits the lowest point on the sky in the south on December 22nd. It's called the winter solstice, uh, the beginning of winter. And for three days, the United States Navy can show and explain it to you that the sun comes up for three days, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, on the same degree. It doesn't go any further south, and it doesn't come back north. But on the same degree that it was on on December 22nd, the sun rises the next two days, 23rd and 24th, on the same degree. So the ancient people said that the sun was alive, he was a, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Leo. He got the kiss of death from Scorpio. And now he is three days, he's not moving at all. So therefore, 